In this video, I'm going to show you how you can export insights and analytics from your Facebook page and import them into Power BI in order to get some analytics and insights. We're going to go through it step by step so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Facebook pages, if you didn't know already, is something that small businesses use to expand their reach or their growth or to increase sales. I use it for my own company, Solutions Abroad, in order to reach more audience with my videos. And if you want to get insights like how many likes you're getting or how much your reach is growing over time, Facebook does a great job of providing inbuilt reporting for you to use in order to check those stats. However, those analytics are exclusive for Facebook and your Facebook page analytics. You can't really match it up with other data that you have externally. And also you're pretty much stuck with the kind of analytics that they provide you. So you might want to export this data and uh, analyze it somewhere else, let's say Power BI. So in this video, we're going to cover how to export that data from Facebook and then import it to Power BI where you can start doing your own analytics. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Facebook business page. Here is the business page that I have for Solutions Abroad, which as I mentioned, is what I use to kind of post my new videos as they come out. So you'll see them in posts here. And then you'll get some insights here. And if you click CO, so from here, what you want to do is click export data. This is where you'll be able to export data that uh, you'll be using to import into Power BI. So let's Click that. So we have a couple of things to choose from here. So let's start uh, one by one. So on the left hand side, you'll have the option to choose what data type you want to export. So do you want to export information about your page itself? So maybe you want to know about, you know, the metrics like your engagement, your likes uh, and about your audience. So you can choose page data if you want that or if you want to know how your posts are doing. So in individual posts, as opposed to uh, your actual page information. So you want to know for your posts, how much impressions do you get or how, what is your reach for those posts? Uh, we're going to try to export both and see what kind of metrics we can pull and extract from this data. On the right hand side, you will have a couple of options uh, on how to export this data. You can export it either in an Excel or a CSV. I prefer a CSV just because it's a little bit more predictable. You can choose the date range. Now as a default, I believe it's uh, the last four weeks, but you can choose this if you want to say uh, this month, this quarter or the last seven days. So you can choose the date range here. And lastly, you're able to control the layout. Now the layout is just the details that you want to export with your report. Now as a default, uh, this is in all page data, which is something that they have pre-selected for you. So the type of metrics that you might want, but if you want to customize this and maybe add some metrics that is not here, or you want to remove some that you don't really use, this is where you can edit it. And just to show you how it looks like, if I click edit all page data, it will take me here. So you'll see on the right hand side here are the columns that we've selected for the export. So it gives us a lot of key metrics like your total likes, uh, reach, impressions, things like this. And this is by default. If you look on the left hand side, you have a lot of uh, columns to choose from to include in this all. So uh, just bear in mind that uh, this is where you can control and fine tune that report that you'll export. But for now, we'll just leave it as default for now. So we will click export this page data. We'll let it download. And actually I wanted to export that in CSV. So I'm going to redo that. So page data for the last four weeks in CSV. And then we're going to do the post data as well, CSV for the last four weeks. So if we open one of these CSV files, 
you will see it comes up with a lot of columns. Now it's not really readable here, but in Power BI this uh, format is supported. So you'll see we have some data and some random numbers here. Every line item is a date in those last four weeks. And then it gives you, let's say the lifetime total likes and then some other metrics that is included in this export. So we want to export this to Power BI and let's see if we can get some analytics on this. So I'm going to go to Power BI desktop. We're gonna go get data from CSV. Let's go to these files that we have exported. We're gonna import this one first. We're gonna hit transform data to open Power Query. This one is pages. So you'll see it's the exact same table that we had on the CSV file, except obviously it's a little bit readable as opposed to how it was before. And now that we've imported the pages data, we also want to import the posts data. So we hit open, we hit okay here. We name this as posts. So here we go. So post level just means that every line is a post that you've made in the last 28 days. So in this case, I have a couple of lines here and each one of these are posts that I've made during that time period. And for each of those posts, we get some information and some analytics in terms of, let's say impressions, reach, likes, things like this which we can use for analysis in Power BI. So before we start working with this, let's start cleaning up these uh, queries first, because we can see, first of all, we have some uh, lines here that we don't want, so remove the nulls. And we also want to change all of these into the right date format. So the so we also want to change the data format of all of these columns to what they're supposed to be, which is either a date or um, numbers. And the quickest way to do that, if you have a lot of columns, is to select everything, go to transform, and then click the tech data type. So when you click this button, Power BI will take a sample of the data that you've imported and it will assume what data type should be applied for those columns. So you'll see that uh, because we have a daily page engage users, it has some number of values in there. It's assumed that this is a numerical column. So now let's clean up posts. Let's do the same thing. So let's clear the empty row that we have there. We'll select everything go to transform detect data type so one thing that we might have to fix manually is the posted column so you'll see it didn't detect this to be uh, a date time uh, column and that's because this is in the us format while i'm in the uk at the moment and uh, this is not recognized by my locale so we have to force this one uh, to be a date time column so let's go here using locale it will bring up and this will force this column to use a locale of my choosing. So I say uh, this data type is coming from the US following the US format. I want you to convert it into a date time column. If we hit OK, you'll see that now it's been recognized as a date time column uh, in our data model. And if you want to know the three different other ways that you can force locale changes for your date time columns in Power BI, I actually covered it in a previous video. So check it out if you haven't yet. So now that we're done with the cleanup, let's now go uh, and click close and apply so we can load this uh, queries into our model. So let's start creating some dashboards here. So let's start with the pages. So you know we have a lot of data here. So we're going to just filter out the stuff that we want to use. But again, with your export, you can control what columns you want to include in your report. So if you don't want all of these other columns that are included, 
like let's say all of these, uh, you can just exclude them in your export and it will be a lot easier to navigate uh, this this pages report so here i've just dragged the date so we can show it in let's say a line chart and i want to get some basic analytics from this report so what we can get from here so we can try to get some likes so let's type total likes here so lifetime total likes by date and maybe we want to show it in a line chart and there you go so it's that easy so now you can see how the like progression has uh, improved or changed over time uh, in your power bi report so let's try to add a couple more things here so i'm just gonna quickly copy this and then let's change these likes into let's say reach instead so daily total reach as your value here we go so just some more information about your reach over time and then let's add another one maybe we want to look at let's say impressions that could be important so daily or weekly organic impressions so maybe we can use one of these there we go so some more insights for you there and then maybe we can do daily total impressions and how that changes on a daily basis. So as I mentioned, when we exported that data, we are seeing the analytics data in the past 28 days. However, if you want to see a larger time frame, uh, you can choose to export a larger time frame from the Facebook. Uh, analytics and insights or what you can do is you can set up a regular monthly extract and then combine them all together in power bi there's an easy way for you to combine multiple monthly exports into excel and csv into power bi and it's actually done automatically by detecting it in a folder and if you're curious on how to implement it to use it for yourself i covered it in another video so check that one out if you haven't yet. So this is the type of data that you can get from the page. Obviously there's more, um, so feel free to explore what other things you can get from the exports. So I'm gonna create a new page here and maybe we can start doing some analytics now on the post side. So if we put the post ID post message here, so this is a little bit different from the page in that uh, each line is not a, a date but a post as i mentioned so for each post you get some information like uh, let's say total likes views uh, organic impressions or reach things like this so you can use that to kind of analyze trends or you know just understand how well your posts are doing so maybe what we can do is create a slicer. So we can create a slicer for the post ID. Maybe make it a drop down so they can select a specific post. And then for each of those posts, maybe we can show the uh, some information like let's say views. So maybe we can add things like organic reach or impressions or maybe we can add information like when it was posted or what type of post is it things like this this is a very simplistic way to use the data but nonetheless now your data from facebook is now imported into power bi for you to integrate and use with your other data sets from other places and that's really it for this video i hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start working with your facebook group analytics data in power bi thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.